Rest in peace, Stuart Gordon. Thank you for all the memories. Nobody wants a doll that's special anymore, that's one of a kind. The weather brings out creativity. It helps me in my work. What kind of work is that? Witchcraft? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Underhold. My name is Sinclair. My Twitter handle is Illegal Priest, and I just want to discuss a little bit of Dolls or The Dolls by Stuart Gordon. Yes, cat. <clears throat> now we've mentioned some Stuart Gordon stuff in our previous videos a bit. I want to say even in the Color Out of Space vid, in the Color Out of Space vid. Robert actually had a whole story about it. <clears throat> okay, we've mentioned Stuart Gordon's work in a lot of our other videos, especially Reanimator. Uh, and I think we talked about Reanimator last in the Color Out of Space vid. So, with his unfortunate passing, I thought I'd do a vid commemorating his legacy by reviewing and talking about dolls or the doll. I'm not sure exactly the official title. I'll probably. When I do the title of the video, it should be the official title. And on a side note, we talked a lot about evil doll films on this channel. The Boy, Annabelle, the original Chucky, new Chucky. That's all I can think of off the top of my head, but just for the amount of videos and the amount of talk about evil dolls, we've done it a bit. And the reason why I picked this one is I haven't seen all of Stuart Gordon's stuff. I've seen a lot of it, but I still haven't seen all of it. So. Uh, when I thought about maybe doing a vid, I just decided to look, you know, what's available on streaming or, you know, just would something come to mind? And I saw The Dolls on Amazon Prime, and I was like, okay, I haven't seen that. And I also saw that it's leaving Amazon Prime on the 31st. That kind of made my decision for me. I was like, okay, it's more of it is as it is, that's a sign. I need to watch it. And I'm glad I did. And Dolls is a horror comedy from Stuart Gordon and Brian Yuzna. Uh, the producer, I believe. They've done a lot of films together. And this one, The Dolls, came out after Reanimator and From Beyond, which are probably the two main ones that people think about when they think about Stuart and Gordon's career. So it was like Reanimator, From Beyond, Dolls, just like bam, 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 right after the other. Now, those other two are H.P. Lovecraft adaptations or Lovecraftian inspired. This one, you know, it, it isn't that. But this was filmed between those previous films, you know, Animator and From Beyond. It was filmed right between them, but it was released after From Beyond because, um, and they were filmed on the same set as From Beyond, from what I understand as well, because some of the post-production of dolls and doing the effects and stuff took a little bit longer, the editing. So it ended up coming out after From Beyond. So that's just a little piece of trivia I found out by looking up some stuff on this. As well as another weird fact, Neil Adams, the comic artist, he did a lot of Silver Age stuff. He's most well known probably for his Batman and X-Men run, I want to say. Um, he's been on uh, Coast to Coast of the Heart Bell a couple times. He ended up doing a lot of concept art for this, I guess. So I just, I thought that was funny. I knew a lot of comic artists uh, have worked in movies before doing storyboards and whatnot. So that was just a fun little tidbit. Now, in some of those previous films of, of Stuart Gordon's, you know, they're generally horror with some comedy, and this one's a horror comedy as well, but a little bit more on the comedy. This film starts out on a dark and stormy night. Uh, mom, dad, and daughter are in a car, kind of driving through the country in the middle of the night, and they get stuck in the mud. They see a house or mansion in the distance, so they decide they're gonna try and find shelter there because the weather is just terrible out. And there's a cool little moment here in this beginning sequence when they're on their way to this mansion or house uh, that I wanna talk about. A lot of horror movies have a dream sequence that's kinda of used to get a cheap jump scare, especially nowadays they do that a lot. So they're like, oh, in the script, there's not much scares in this part. We can't think of something where we just want to have another uh, jump scare. And they just have like a nightmare sequence and you're like, oh, okay, so 
they become meaningless kind of in the plot of things. And this does that right off the bat. But it's a daydream sequence and it's essential to the plot, I would say. So I really, really liked that. Uh, the daughter, Judy, has a daydream where she daydreams about her teddy bear killing her dad and mom-in-law. So at first, it seems like it's just used as a jump scare, but it's establishing Judy's imagination, and that really comes into play in the tone and feel of this movie. So I found that particularly cool that it, it had that, that sequence, actually, which usually bugs me. And they find their way to the house. I believe they knock on the door, but they don't get an answer. So they find their way in through another entrance and they end up getting confronted by the owners. The owners hear them trying to get in and, and pull a shotgun on them. And it's an older couple. They're a kindly and spooky older couple named Gabriel and Hillary Hardwick. Felt like kind of a good old timey name. And they tell the family, hey, you can stay the night. We understand the weather. It gets like this out here and people aren't prepared for it. They don't expect it to be this bad. So, hey, stay the night over here at this mansion with us. And they also drop a little hint or two that this isn't the first time they've had to have borders for the night, you know? Uh, so this obviously seemed to have happened before. They kind of expect it, which is a little, it's a little ominous on its own too. But before bed, you know, before they have everybody tuck in in their, in their rooms and whatnot, they have a bite to eat. So they're in the dining room and, you know, they're just discussing things and establishing some parts like, uh, old man Gabriel gives the daughter Judy a doll and it's uh, a doll he made and it's one of those old Punch and Judy punch dolls. So that was, you know, clever and cute. And they point that out very, very specifically. So it's not just a subtle nod, you know, they're like, yeah, no, we, this is definitely the intent. And this is also how you find out that Gabriel was a, an old school toy maker and he still makes toys and specialty is dolls, but he makes toys. And while they're finishing eating, a group of three people barge in through this back door of the kitchen area. It's a, you know, mid, not middle age, but a younger man and two younger women that are like 80s Madonna punk rock style. And they're all just sopping wet. The guy in this group, Ralph is the character's name, looks a lot like Bob from Stranger Things in like mannerisms look. I mean, the guy looks like Sean Austin looks like now, but it doesn't come across like a knockoff. He's very good in the film. And so it doesn't seem like, you know, a bargain value Sean Austin. You know, uh, he does great. He, you don't feel like he's a second rate person at all. Ralph explains to everybody that they're basically in the same situation. He's like, he was driving in the bad weather. He found these two younger women out in the, the horrible weather, picked them up to give them some shelter, but then they all got stuck when his car got stuck in the mud. So they're doing the same thing. They found the house they're going in for shelter. And the Hardwick family, bless their hearts. <laughs> it says, hey, you can all stay here. Now, once we are at this point where everybody's getting settled and going to bed, that's where the horror and everything escalating starts. And everybody gets terrorized by animated killer dolls that Gabriel made that are all throughout the house. And I feel like I'm not gonna go into spoilers too much really here because I think this is a good time to watch it and it's gonna be on Amazon Prime only for a little bit, so check it out. I found this to be a delightful movie and a lot more funny than I expected. And I did expect some humor. And Stuart Gordon has shown he can do humor, but there is some lines and situations in this and their delivery that are just hilarious in this. Some of the lines, if you were just looking at them on paper, they would just seem innocuous, but the delivery and performance of them is really what sells it. And you can tell it's very intentional. The delivery, it's just really good. And you can see what they're going for and what they achieve. So like there's this great sequence where Judy's dad, David, uh, goes to hit Judy. Like he's like, I hate you, I'm gonna hit you. 
David is only stopped by his girlfriend, the stepmom, her name's Rosemary. He's only stopped by her because she's worried that their child support will go up if he hits her. Not because it's terrible to hit a child or anything. So it's very dark uh, humor that's just delivered really well. And there's lots of little moments like that. That's just one I really wanted to just point out because I don't want to spoil all the humor uh, in this, but you know, that's the stuff to expect. I mean, I'm not sure that's how child support works, but, but that plays into the humor. I feel like it's intentional and it's not bad writing. That was what they were going for. And just extra props to the guy playing Ralph. He really, really comes across like Bob in Stranger Things, but he's excellent, really delivers on everything asked. The horror and gore is also good. So it's not just humor. All that stuff is very well done. And there was some extra gore that was filmed that wasn't put in the movie, but in editing, they kind of pulled it back out. And I do feel it was a good fit. There's definitely some bloody great moments in here, but there's a tone to this film that if you would have went too far in that direction, I think it would not have played as well. So they noticed that. And that just goes to show how well that group of Gordon, Yuzna, Yuzna and everybody knows their material. The overall tone is kind of a children's fantasy horror. It can be a little goofy and a little hammy, some good stage acting. As a child, I would have loved to have seen this film along uh, like The Gate and films like that. I really feel like this fits very well into that. Uh, if you have a child, this is a great film, I think, to introduce them to you, as long as they're okay with watching an older film, because, you know, so, some children are like, oh, that's old, I don't want to watch it. But if you do and you think they're okay with a little bit of gore, if they're already watching some horror movies, put this on the list now. It's great. It even has a little bit of a haunted house vibe with the setting and scenario and the lighting, just the location. And it's hard to say a lot about child actors because you don't want to say like, oh, great performance, and then you read about them being abused or something. But Judy does really well. There's some really solid, um, there's a really solid charisma to her. There's this moment where she has this line of like, yeah, it was pretty bloody when they dragged her away. That is great. It, it's hard to for me to say it and convey that humor. But when you see it on the screen, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Also, keep your eyes open for the little Pan's Labyrinth type moment. I thought that was pretty fun and cute. Anyway, great film. A little different than I expected, but also better than I expected and I did expect it to be good. If you have seen this and you remember like a funny line, put it in the comments because there's a lot of great ones in here. Maybe they don't come across in text, but still other people read them might make them smile too. Rest in peace, Stuart Gordon. Thank you for all the memories, including this memory right here. Thank you for watching The Underhold and check out Dolls on Prime Video before the end of March, if you can. Peace out.